if you grew up uh, flipping through those heavy textbooks, you already know the problem, right? That book, it's this monument of knowledge, sure, but it's completely indifferent to you. Utterly indifferent. Yeah, does it know if you're struggling with, say, dense economic theory or if you kind of zone out reading about microbiology? Mm -hmm. The static page cannot watch you struggle, switch examples when you glaze over, or quiz you at the exact moment your memory needs that little nudge. It's just yeah. the same for everyone. Regardless of what you already know or how you learn best, it's a one-size-fits-all approach that we know isn't optimal. So the question we're tackling today is simple, but honestly pretty transformative. What does a book look like if it actively learns you? Ah, that's the core of it. We're doing a deep dive into source material covering Google's technology stack called Learn Your Way, which our experts describe as, well, the first genuinely credible answer to this modern AI textbook question. And it's really important, I think, not to just think of this as just a fancy PDF or a digital textbook you'd be missing the point entirely. Our sources really emphasize this. Mm -hmm. It's a structured, dynamic, research-backed learning environment. Mm -hmm. It's an engine, really, mm -hmm. designed specifically to optimize long-term memory. Right, and that's our mission for this deep dive, to understand precisely how this technology works, how it uses personalization and uh, different representations to deliver what the sources are calling a measurable 11% lift in long-term recall. That's a specific number. It is. And what's compelling is that it isn't some, you know, wild new theory pulled out of thin air. It works by synthesizing two core, pretty established ideas from learning science. Which are? Aggressive personalization of the content and providing multiple different representations of that same material. Okay, let's unpack this then. When we talk about an AI textbook, technically, what are we looking at? Because, you know, the immediate fear might be that some large language model is just making stuff up about history or science. Right, generating plausible sounding nonsense. Exactly, but our sources seem to uh, alleviate that fear pretty quickly. They stress this is a system that keeps the core source material intact. Yes, think reliable peer reviewed stuff like OpenStax or LibreTexts, that's the foundation. And it just layers these custom adaptive features on top of that trusted content. That distinction is absolutely crucial. The core truth remains the core truth but the path to that truth changes. They call the first big step in personalization re-leveling. Re-leveling. Yeah, the system uses its specialized models, LearnLM is the engine they mention, to rewrite complex language to match the reader's current grade level or you know their comprehension ability. Hmm, but wait a sec, if the system is re-leveling or simplifying the language, isn't there a risk we're just watering down the material? How do they make sure they're preserving the original scope and like? the academic rigor. That's the key engineering challenge the sources highlight, and they meet it by anchoring the process. So when the system re-levels, it's simplifying vocabulary, sentence structure, syntax. Okay. But it cannot remove key concepts or required examples or mess with the structural flow of the original chapter. Think of it like a really good translator. Ah, okay. Changes the language, not the underlying message. Precisely. It's designed to reduce that mental friction that cognitive load that comes from reading material that's just a bit too hard, keeps you in that sweet spot, the zone of proximal development. And it goes beyond just word difficulty, right? The sources say it personalizes the examples themselves, which seems like a fantastic way to acknowledge prior knowledge. Oh, absolutely. They treat the student's interests, what they already know, like a ladder to new concepts. Right. So if you've told the system you're into sports, when you hit Newton's third law, a traditional textbook might give you I don't know, an abstract example about colliding blocks. Yeah, pretty dry. This system could bring it alive to the arc of a basketball shot, maybe, or the spring in a runner's takeoff. I love that. I saw examples like uh, using a neighborhood kitchen to explain global supply chains. Exactly. Or the soccer transfer market to illustrate economic systems. It makes it click. It turns the abstract into something immediately familiar, concrete. And once you've reduced that initial friction, you move into the second pillar multiple representations. Okay. This is where dual coding theory comes in. The idea that we remember concepts better when we encode them through more than one sensory channel, visual and verbal, for instance. Right. It's like trying to memorize directions versus looking at a map while someone reads them aloud. The map gives you that visual anchor, the dual code. And the memory sticks much better. A static page gives you one angle. This AI textbook aims to give you five different lenses on the exact same chapter content. Five lenses, okay, what are they? So they call them interchangeable forms. 
You have the immersive text, which is the detailed chapter, but broken down nicely. Right. Then slides and narration, which is kind of like a structured lecture. Audio lessons, delivered more like a conversational deep dive, actually, a bit like this. Uh -huh. Mind maps for visual learners who need to see the structure laid out. Yeah. And finally, short embedded assessments or quizzes. Let's pause on that immersive text for a second. What's that experience like? It's more than just words on a screen, presumably. It is. It's meant to be dynamic. And crucially, as you touched on, it actually flags where the text was adapted for your reading level or where a personalized example was dropped in. Oh, that's interesting. So it's transparent. Yeah, you're not reading in a black box. You know what the system did. Plus, the text is interleaved with those little check-ins, those short okay, assessments. Then, those quick checks use that glows and grows framing, which I thought was a really brilliant psychological touch. It truly is, isn't it? Instead of just being marked wrong, which can feel punitive. Totally. You get specific feedback. It highlights what you already grasp the glows and points to areas needing immediate attention that grows. It turns assessment from this like scary judgment into just a navigational tool. Exactly. A formative check right in the flow of reading. And the system, you know, it's, it never runs out of patience for those quick, non-judgmental checks. That's something even the best human teacher struggles with when they have 30 kids in a class. Okay, here's where it gets really interesting for me. All the cool interfaces and custom examples they don't matter if the learning doesn't actually stick. Right. Education is full of shiny demos. We need the math. We need the hard data. Does this approach actually deliver results? And the sources provide that. Quantifiable data from a real-world setting. Google's team ran a randomized controlled study RCT with high school students. Okay. They used a chapter on adolescent brain development. Pretty complex topic, good test case. Mm -hmm. One group got the full customized learn-your-way environment, the control group. They used a standard, non-adaptive digital reader with the exact same base material. Okay, so walk us through the numbers. I gather the immediate results were good, but the long-term retention, that's the real game changer. That's right. On the immediate assessment, like right after finishing the chapter, the customized group scored nine points higher. 77% versus 68%. Nine points. That's pretty solid on its own. It is. A solid win. <laughs> but as we know, real learning is about durable memory. It's not just about cramming for the test tomorrow. Absolutely. It's got to survive the weekend, at least. Exactly. So when they did a retention test three to five days later, the difference actually widened significantly. Really? Yeah. The Learn Your Way group scored an astonishing 11 points higher, 78% versus 67%. That delta, the gap between the groups, grew over time. Wow. 11 points higher after several days. It demonstrates the system isn't just helping you read better in the moment. It's driving the material deeper into long-term memory storage. That 11-point lift in durable recall is, well, it's staggering, frankly. But I'm also really fascinated by the qualitative data, the student experience. Yeah, and the qualitative results arguably drive the quantitative ones. Yeah. The students just felt better about the whole process. Get this. Yeah. 100% every single student who used the AI textbook reported feeling more comfortable taking the assessment. 100%. That's huge. Think about test anxiety. Exactly. Learning gets hampered by that all the time. If a tool makes you feel 100% more comfortable taking the test, you're probably more likely to engage honestly and deeply with the material in the first place. It removes a major barrier. And their intent to reuse it. Nearly universal. 93% of the students said they'd be more likely to use this tool again for future learning. So it's not just effective, it's actually engaging. They liked using it. Which is critical for adoption, right? Yeah. It proves the system isn't just effective on paper, but it's preferred by the students themselves. So, okay, let's synthesize this. If we boil it down, what are the core drivers behind that success? Why does this specific blend of tech and pedagogy work so well, according to the sources? Well, the sources basically point back to those two original pillars, but frame them now as the drivers of success. First, reduced friction right? by aligning both the reading level and the examples to the student's current understanding, their mental model. Mm -hmm. It just makes getting into the material easier, less frustrating, more relevant. Makes sense. And the second driver? Amplified recall. The system cleverly takes repetition, which can be, let's face it, boring. Very boring. And turns it into a feature. By encouraging students to revisit the same concept through different senses, seeing, hearing, interacting, and adding those timely little quizzes, uh -huh. it ensures the material gets revisited and reinforced right when the memory needs that boost. It's smart repetition. Okay, let's peek under the hood a bit. 
The technology core is Learn LM. You mentioned that. It sounds important that this wasn't just some general purpose AI, like bolted onto a textbook. Exactly. The sources stress the design philosophy. This engine was specifically designed with pedagogical principles built in from the start. How does that play out in the workflow? Well, the pipeline is carefully layered. The original source chapter comes in as the untouchable source of truth. Okay, the anchor. Then the system applies the student's interest profile and does that re-leveling of the language based on their needs. That resulting personalized text then becomes the foundation, the substrate from which all the other five representations are generated. Ah, I see. So because that process is standardized, it guarantees that all five forms, the mind map, slides, audio, they all stay perfectly aligned with the original curriculum and the personalized text. Right. There's no risk of the slides suddenly saying something different from the immersive text, for example. Consistency is built in. Okay. And this design also speaks to student agency, doesn't it? The source has mentioned it offers a small set of good paths. Yeah. It respects agency without causing chaos. We know that giving students unlimited options can just lead to choice paralysis. Right, analysis paralysis. So this AI textbook doesn't overwhelm you with 50 modules, mm -hmm. but it does let you choose the best path forward for you for that particular topic using those five lenses. So for instance, a student could, what, start with the slides? Yeah, maybe start with the narrated slides to kind of sketch the landscape, get the big picture view of a new subject. Okay, get oriented. Then feeling oriented, maybe they switch to the immersive text for the details slow down, tackle those embedded questions. Makes sense. And maybe before they finish, they pop open the mind map for a quick visual review, just to make sure the overall structure is locked in. So the system holds the chapters back down steady while they switch between these purposeful lenses. They optimize their own path. Exactly. They're in control, but within a structured, helpful framework. And this is gonna be huge for teacher leverage too, right? I mean, no teacher, no matter how dedicated, can realistically generate five distinct high quality versions, audio, slides, maps, for every single chapter, not on a tight deadline? Impossible. The system does that heavy lifting, that instantaneous creation. Which frees up the human instructor. That's the whole point multiplying the teacher's capability. The human teacher gets freed up to focus on the uniquely human work, the coaching, facilitating discussions, extension activities, mm -hmm. and they can look at the system's feedback data to see, okay, where are my students collectively struggling? And then reinforce those specific concepts in class. It shifts their role from just delivering content to becoming a more personalized coach. And we absolutely have to talk about the impact on access and equity here. That seems profound. It really is. It's kind of the quiet power of the tool, that re-leveling function we talked about. Yeah. It means students in the same classroom maybe with very different reading abilities, can all work on the exact same required chapter, but at a level that's appropriate for them. Wow, that just lowers the barrier to entry instantly for so many kids. Instantly. And the audio lessons help students who learn better by listening. The personalized examples help make connections without the teacher needing to be a mind reader about every student's hobbies. Right. The tool adapts to the student, essentially moving equity from just being a policy discussion into the actual daily learning workflow. So, okay. Lots of potential benefits, but what does this all mean for us? Before we just accept this as the future, we need to ask some good skeptical questions. What are the natural critiques or concerns we should have about an AI textbook that customizes source material? That's crucial. And the sources identified three main areas of concern that the designers actively work to mitigate. The first one is fidelity. Right. Does the personalized content stay true to the original source? How do we know it hasn't subtly warped the meaning? That feels like the most critical question. Absolutely. And they address this, as we discussed, by anchoring everything to real, verifiable chapters. It keeps the structure, the hierarchy of the original, and it flags where it may change the personalization, the examples. So transparency is key. Transparency and engineering to preserve the core facts and structure. The system is designed, the sources say, to be highly reliable in this regard. Fidelity is non-negotiable. Okay, critique number two involved generalization. You mentioned the efficacy study used one specific topic, adolescent brain development. Strong proof of concept, yes, but it is limited. That's right, and we have to acknowledge that. That study provides, let's say, the floor of expected performance, not necessarily the ceiling or the average across all domains. So the next step is broader testing. 
Exactly. The necessary next step is a wider sweep, different grades, different subjects like math or maybe languages, diverse student groups, to really map out where these durable gains are strongest and if they hold true everywhere. That expansion is just the logical progression. It doesn't invalidate the core idea. Got it. And the third critique, it's the classic one for any digital learning tool, gaming the quizzes. Ah, yes. If the assessments are low stakes, what stops a student from just clicking through, guessing randomly? Yeah, how do you prevent that? The defense seems to be baked into the architecture. The quizzes are grounded, they're short, frequent, and interleave you directly with the reading. They're not really designed to award points in a high-stakes way. Right, the glows and grows. I exactly, because the feedback is that targeted glows and grows, not just a score. It actually makes reflecting on the material more rewarding than just guessing. It encourages genuine self-assessment. It becomes a self-correcting feedback loop rather than a gameable system. Okay, that makes sense. So this is great. Let's wrap this part up with a practical learning loop for you, the listener. If you encounter an AI textbook like this one, based on what we've learned, what's the best strategy to actually maximize that 11% durable recall lift? Right, how do you use it effectively? Mm -hmm. I think you need to think in intentional loops. The goal is to move beyond just passive reading and leverage those five representations purposefully. Okay, so step one, maybe start with the slides and narration sketch the landscape first. Yeah, get the spine of the chapter, build that initial framework in your mind, see the big picture. Then step two, switch to the immersive text. Slow down here. Definitely. Take in those specific examples, the details, and really engage with those embedded questions. This is where you acquire the necessary depth and check your immediate understanding. Okay, makes sense. What if a section feels tricky, if something just isn't clicking? That's where you might try the audio lesson. Step three, maybe? Sometimes just hearing the concept explained in a different modality, a different voice, is the cognitive shift you need. Good point. Step four. Before you end that initial session, open the mind map. Use that visual tool to confirm the big picture is still intact in your head, that you see the connections, the hierarchy between the main ideas. Okay. Solidify the structure and the most critical step, probably, for long-term memory. Yeah. Step five. Because memory is strengthened by retrieval, by effortful recall, schedule a short return session a day or two later. Don't reread the whole thing, though. No, no. Don't just reread passively. Jump back to the mind map, maybe, or try a few of the quizzes again, focusing on the parts you found trickiest. That deliberate effort to retrieve the knowledge is what converts fragile short-term exposure into durable long-term memory. That makes perfect sense. It's about active recall. <laughs> exactly. So... You know, the traditional textbook is brilliant at being the same for everyone. It's that standardized source. But this AI textbook, driven by learning science and an engine like LearnLM, it's designed to be brilliant at being specifically right for you. It blends that personalization and variation to deliver those measurable gains, gains in the kind of recall that actually lasts long past the test day. So this really feels like the beginning of a fundamentally different contract between us as readers and the written word. The book still carries the immutable facts, the core knowledge, mm -hmm. but the AI textbook shapes the path. It customizes the journey so you, the reader, stay engaged, maybe feel less anxious, and the knowledge actually has a better chance of sticking. A better chance of becoming durable. Yeah. And if technology like this is deployed thoughtfully, ethically, well, the hope is that more students will carry the knowledge out of the page and genuinely into the world.